Hey, how y'all doing? I'm Corey Simpson. Um, uh, I was asked by my um, brother, uh, Spiritual Peace, to share my testimony. And um, my testimony is, um, you know, I come from I come from the street. I come from, um, you know, the wicked side of things, the evil side of things, uh, selling drugs, uh, drinking, popping pills. You know, all the all the dark stuff. You know, that's where I come from. And um, you know, I, I did that for a long time. You know, I was out there for a long time, and I felt God pulling to me, but I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to um, uh, accept Him. I was screaming out for Him. I was screaming out to be saved out of that, but I didn't know how to actually proclaim Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You know, so I mean, I I played around in that stuff for a long time, and um, eventually, you know, I ended up. Uh, I was going to jail a lot. You know, and um, and, and even that didn't wake me up. But um, eventually, you know, um, I was sent to prison. And when, when I went to prison, that's when I woke up. <clears throat> that's when I realized that, that God was pulling at me for a long time. And, um, you know, he took me for a walk in there. You know, he, uh, he showed me, he was showing me um, what my life was going to end up being, you know, if I didn't change. You know, um, uh, you know I began going to church. Um, and I realized that I was nothing. I realized that I was nothing in there. I realized that being in prison, I was less than nothing. I wasn't a good father. I have a son and two girl, two daughters. I wasn't a good father. I couldn't be a good father. You know, I, I you know, I got a little brother. I couldn't be um, a, 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 a good role model of any kind. And he was showing me this. And he was also showing me that if I didn't change, it was going to be worse. You know, I wasn't going to come out this time. I was either going to be um, dead or in a, a longer sentence, you know. So, so you know, I, I, I accepted Christ while I was in prison. I began to um, uh, read. I begin to. Um, I was always a prayer though. I always prayed. You know, like I said, I was screaming for to come out, but I didn't know how to. I didn't know how to ask. You know, I didn't know how to say I loved God or anything. But I would always pray. You know, so you know, I prayed a lot in prison. You know, and then when I got out of prison, well, in prison, I, I told him. You know, I said, you know, this is my life belongs to you now. You know, I'm gonna get because the drugs I felt was um, the hardest thing for me to give up. You know, um, I felt that either I was going to be dead or in jail. So, you know, drugs is all I knew. You know, I didn't know anything about keeping a job or anything. It was all about drugs and women and clothes and money. You know what I mean? That's kind of like what I grew up seeing. You know, so um, I felt like drugs was the, was the hardest thing. So, you know, I told him I'd give it up. You know, I gave it up and I, you know, I, I told him I never touched, I never touched drugs again because I started to, you know, I realized what he was showing me. I realized that this right here was, was, was the, this right here, once I went to prison, I realized that this is, this, this was the end for me. You know, that was the end for my, um, you know, the, the bad things that I was involved in, you know, so, you know, I gave it up. I gave up the drugs, you know, and, um. You know, I accepted I accepted Jesus into my life, you know, and uh, I began to feel different. You know, I began to feel very different. So when I got out, um, you know, here I am now. I'm not selling drugs, but I still got other things that I'm involved in. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm still drinking. You know what I mean? I'm still popping pills and sleeping around with women. You know, so he began to knock things down gradually. You know what I mean? God won't put a whole lot on you. You know what I mean? He'll knock things down gradually. So... Now that I've given up drugs, he started to speak to me about you, you drinking, you know. So I sort of, you know, we we sometimes try to make a deal with God. And I kind of try to make a deal with him like, okay, well, I'll slow down. That, that wasn't good enough because I ended up in more trouble. So then when I went back to jail, I said, okay, well, now I see where my life is going. So now I'm going to have to give up drinking. So I gave up drinking and I got out and he dealt with me with something else. Now I'm sleeping around with women fornicating. So he knocked that off, you know. So gradually he began to knock things off for me and I began to change. My life began to change and my life began to be something that I've never experienced before. You know what I mean? I've never experienced, you know, the what it feels like to serve him, what it feels like to actually accept him into your life. It's something that's that you can never experience out on the bad side of things in the street. You know, that right there is, that's the evil side of things. And you know, it's, it's, it's nothing but destruction. You know what I mean? There's no real love out there. There's no real, there's nothing. It's, it's all the, the work of the enemy out there. And that's what I was involved in. And, and I didn't realize I was involved in it until I got saved. When you get saved, then you realize how much, um, uh, how, how evil things are, how much of a lie that you know that that's out there and you know and that's what happened to me so 
I mean, this is the best years of my life. You know what I mean? I've never experienced a love like I, like I feel now. You know, I never got that from any alcohol. I never got that from any um, drug, any woman, you know, no money. You know what I mean? Never filled me up the way I feel now. You know, this is a, this is a feeling I've never, I've, I'm, I'm full. You know, I'm, I'm full. All I need is him. You know, back then I needed everything else. I needed money, I needed cars, I needed alcohol, I needed to party, I needed to go to strip clubs, I needed to sleep with her and her and just, you know, I, I needed all those things. I need none of that now. I need none of that. Just by accepting him into my life. When you speak it, things begin to happen. Once you speak Jesus as your Lord and Savior, things begin to happen and your life begin to change and you begin to not be in interested in the things that that you were interested in before you know you you received them you know and that's just that that's the beauty that's the beauty of serving you know i'll tell you a story um before i went to prison i had got um i had got very intoxicated you know what i mean i was off pills i was off um alcohol i was off you know, uh, I was, I was, I was, I was intoxicated, you know, and, uh, I hid drugs from myself. I hid some drugs and some pills and, you know, things like that. I hid it from myself. And the next day I looked for it, you know, and I couldn't find it. I looked for it everywhere. I looked for it for about a week everywhere, you know, and I couldn't find it. So then I ended up going to prison. So now that I've accepted God into my life and I've given up drugs and I've given up all those things, I got out of prison. And the same place that I that I lost these drugs and stuff, the same place that I looked, um, I looked, I looked several times, and I I looked in the drawer and I looked in this drawer, like I said, several times, and I couldn't find these drugs, right? So uh, I opened the drawer and it was sitting right there, you know what I mean? So now that I've given it up, here it is, right here in my face, you know. And that's how the enemy works. The enemy will try to trick you and bring you back to what God has. What, what he has saved you from, you know, and, and that's what happened, you know, so, um, and that was, that was the enemy's way of trying to bring me because I could have easily, you know, uh, made a call and got it sold and been right back in to what I told God I'll never touch again. And that's the enemy's job. The enemy's job is to, is to make you disobey, you know, what God is telling you is to make you go right back into your mess is to put you right back into your mess to put you, you know, to take you backwards. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and I knew what it was. I knew that was the work of the enemy, you know? So I, you know, the first thing I did was grab the drugs. I took the drugs and I flushed them down the toilet. I've never been able to do that. You know, I've never been able to take drugs. That was money, you know, and I had just got out of prison. I, I didn't, I didn't have any money at the time, so I could have used it. And the enemy knows these things. The enemy knows that, um, uh, you know, money and using money and, and, and whatever else, uh, vice you had, you know, he, he will use that against you. You know what I mean? And if you weak, you'll fall back to it. But, you know, by the, by the grace of God, I didn't fall back into it. Like I said, I flushed it and I've never touched drugs since. You know what I mean? I haven't, um, um, I don't have an urge to go out and party. I don't have an urge to go out getting drunk. I don't have an urge to sleep with uh, woman after woman. You know what I mean? I don't have those urges anymore. And it's all because I accepted Jesus into my life. And I accepted him into my heart. He began to guide me and show me what it really means to so what it really means to love and what it really means to have um, a fulfillment, you know, out of life, a true fulfillment out of life. You know what I mean? Because like I said, the the you know, if you out there in the streets and if you're involved in any, you know, um, drug activities or whatever it is, or alcohol, whatever it is, that's how the enemy gets you. Once you begin to put that stuff in your body, you're an easy target. Once you begin to drink and pop pills or, you know, you smoking your weed or whatever it is, you're an easy target because all that stuff doesn't, that those, those things are poisonous to the mind. You know what I mean? And the enemy knows this, you know, so, um, you know, so it just really, it feels really good, you know, to have, uh, to have the growth that, that I've had, you know, all because I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, you know what I mean? I'm no longer walking in the, in the dark path of things. I'm no longer, um, I no longer have an urge for the darkness, for, for the dark side of things. I no longer have an urge, you know, my only urge is to serve him and to, um, and to learn more of him and learn more of how, how I can be pleasing to him. And how I can be, um, how I can be more of a, a, a useful tool, uh, an, an effective tool. You know what I mean? And that's what he'll do. You know what I mean? He'll put you in a place that you never saw yourself before. I never saw myself in church. 
You know, I never saw myself coming and praising, raising my hands and, and proclaiming that, you know, he is Lord. And I've never uh, saw myself worshiping. You know what I mean? I was the one that came to church when my, my mother would beg me to come to church and I'll come to church and, and I'm uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Now it's the most comfortable feeling to me. You know, now I'm being out in the street and those things are uncomfortable. You know what I mean? So that's what God will do for you. He will change that around, you know, and put you in a place that you never saw yourself before. That's just his grace and mercy and his love. It's a love that you've never experienced before. You cannot experience his love until you accept him, until you accept him into your life and you start to and start to apply him into your life, which is the word of God. You know, get into your word and study your word and apply what's in it. You know what I mean? And then you will begin to feel and then you will begin to ex experience true love, real love. You know what I mean? You will begin to experience the real love of Christ and, and understanding, you know, why it is that he, you know, why it is we have what we have. It's all because of him. It's all because of the sacrifice. That's why we have mercy and grace. That's the only reason I got saved out of the street. Or I, got, I went, you know, um, I had to go to prison. It was uncomfortable, but God will send you through some uncomfortable things so so, so you can begin to have uh, um, a beauty that you've never felt before. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's, it's a beast, you know what I mean? But in the end, you get the beauty. You know what I mean? And that's just how God works. I mean, that's that's how loving he is. It's all because of Jesus Christ. So you have to you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have to speak that. You have to speak it. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I, I, I accept you over my life. I accept you to be the leader of my life. And you, when you mean it, as soon as you say it with sincerity and you mean it, a work begins to happen. It's a work that begins to happen within your heart and urges will fall off of you. Things that you loved, you will, it will begin to make you sick to your stomach. You know what I'm saying? You will begin to detest these things. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, um, uh, people that you love to hang around and love to participate, the things you love to participate in with the people that you participated, you know, uh, um, in it with, you won't have an urge for. You begin to have an urge only to serve and only to love and only to give and only to um, take care and um, assemble yourself around the people of God. You know, because that other stuff is foolishness. You know what I mean? We don't have we don't have time to deal with foolishness anymore. You know what I mean? I mean, time is really time is getting short. So you don't want to. Um, you don't want that time to run out. You haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You haven't experienced the beauty that He's trying to give you right right here on this earth. There's beauty right here on this earth. Right here on this earth, but you can't get it on the dark side of things. I've been there. I've been there. You know what I mean? It's no coincidence that you see the people of God testifying, like right now, testifying, talking to you. Or you see people in the neighborhoods telling you the goodness of God and people who used to sell drugs and maybe even used to be a murderer or maybe used to be a rapist or whatever. Now they're proclaiming that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Don't be deceived by the talks of the world. Don't be deceived by the talks of the world. You can see his glory right now in people. You can see his glory right now in the people that's changing. That nothing could change. Not no man, no woman could change. It took God to change that person. It took God. So I encourage you. I encourage you that if you're out there and you're still involved in these evil things, you're still involved in some of the things that I've shared with you, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Try him. Try Jesus sincerely. Try him. Try him. And it'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. All right? God bless. Doesn't matter what I did, but he only sees me for who I am.